reward flights, business upgrades, merchandise, gift cards, and of course, those infamous toasters. All of this could be yours with frequent flyer points. You could earn free trips all over the world. All this stuff makes it seem like frequent flyer programs could be a very costly proposition for airlines. But in fact, they are often the most profitable parts of the entire airline business. So if they're making money, who's paying for all this? Frequent flyer programs were once considered the domain of frequent corporate travellers, but over time, these programs evolved and now anyone can benefit from them. In their very early versions, frequent flyer credit cards were the main product that could earn you points outside of flying. Today, it's grown far and wide, where now all sorts of stuff can earn you points. You can earn points by eating out, purchasing groceries, buying insurance. You can even rack up points by sleeping. So with so many ways to earn points now, how do they make any money? First, it's important to distinguish between the two types of points offerings airlines provide. The first is what most people are accustomed to. Buy a flight, get some reward points. In the early days in Australia, this was one point per kilometre flown, which was later changed to one point per mile. Officially, Aussie Airlines made this change to align with international custom. Unofficially, it was so they only had to pay 62% of the points. It's the second points offering that is most lucrative to the airlines. They will sell their points, usually in bulk, to their partners, who in turn offer these points as bonuses to their customers. Kind of like buying a gift card. It's more than a card. This is a gift card. The partners are incentivized to do this because points are proven to attract new customers and retain current ones. So in the past, most businesses spent their marketing budget on traditional advertising. But these days, many are actually redirecting some of that money towards purchasing frequent flyer points from the airlines. With a small fixed cost, but an unlimited ability to sell points to partners, the opportunity for profit is very high. And this is why airlines are constantly on the lookout for new partnerships. Officially, they brand this as looking for new ways to reward our members. Unofficially, it's code for looking for new ways to increase and diversify our revenue base away from the costly business of actually running an airline. Whatever the reason, frequent flyer members and point hack subscribers can be thankful for one thing. More profitable frequent flyer divisions means more exciting travel opportunities for us. So what happens with all these points they've sold? The challenge here for airlines is to ensure they optimally price their rewards. Price them too high and the rewards will just seem out of reach. People will just stop trying to earn the points. Price them too low and airlines are giving away stuff that someone might have paid good money for. <laughs> Essentially, they want this equation to be as high as possible. Because they decide how many points they issue and the value of those points through redemption costs, they can directly affect this formula whenever they want to maximize their chances of achieving a profit. They just can't push it too far. These programs incentivize airlines to keep the rewards enticing, so customers will keep wanting to engage with the program and continue to seek out those precious points. Allow me. There are quite a few more benefits to the airlines too. One, by offering a frequent flyer reward seat on what would otherwise be an unsold seat, airlines are at least getting some money back. And by issuing one of these seats, they can maintain a viable price floor and not compromise their cash prices through heavy discounting. Two, promoting ongoing loyalty to the airline from engaged frequent flyer members. They may be willing to pay a slight premium on airfares to receive points and status benefits, and they may even be less sensitive to price changes. Additionally, the benefits that many frequent flyer members gain, like priority check-in and boarding, come at no additional cost to the airline. And three, every unspent, lost or expired point essentially saves the airline money because they're not being traded in for anything. There are apparently trillions of unspent points worldwide, which ends up impacting that profit formula quite well in the airline's favor. To enroll in the new Qantas Frequent Flyer program call 008 803 347 right now. After all, when it comes to frequent flying, we go further. By now, many airlines globally have caught on to the sizable financial benefits that frequent flyer programs provide. But these programs don't just serve the airline's interests, they're in your interests as well. Without a profitable frequent flyer market, many travelers and point hackers would be unable to fulfill their travel bucket lists, be it to travel to as many places as possible or to experience the thrill of an onboard shower in first class. To learn how to earn and maximize your points so you can start ticking off that list, subscribe to this channel. And make sure to check out pointhacks.com.au for more in-depth guides and the latest frequent flyer tips and deals.